Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on Wound Up. In this one, we're taking a look at our first collection submission, which I will feature here in this video. If you would like to get your own watch collection featured here on the channel, please do follow the first link in the video description, which will take you to another video by me, which shows you how to submit your watch collection. In this first one, we're taking a look at a collection sent in from the gentleman Nyama Jones, who lives in Maryland. He describes that he is interested in fitness, and so his watches do have to be able to take at least a bit of a beating. He prefers watches that are very versatile and strap-friendly. In this first image, we see an overview of his watch collection. And I gotta say, I do see some very interesting pieces here, so uh, let's get into them. The first watch we have here is a vintage-inspired watch by the company Dan Hendry. This is called in 1963 and is a limited edition chronograph watch limited to, you guessed it, 1963 pieces. In his description, he says that he loves its style and functionality. It does have a rotating bezel and instead of minute markers, it does have the hour markers which enables you to set a different time zone which is very useful. He says it's very easy to read and use. The watch is featuring, I think, if I'm not entirely mistaken, uh, the Miyota 6S20 movement, I believe, which is an accurate quartz movement, however, uh, the seconds hand for the chronograph module moves just like it would on a mechanical watch, which gives it the nice vintage feel. This watch is definitely a good looking watch. I do love its design and I would love to get my hands on one of these watches for review in the future. It's a very interesting watch, especially at its price tag of just around $200. Next up, we have another watch by the same company, Dan Henry. This time around, it's a diver, and it's called the Dan Henry 1970 Compressor Diver. He says it's great on either rubber, NATO, or a mesh. I do believe you. It has great loom and with a rotating inner bezel. Very interesting. So you rotate the inner bezel with one of those two crowns. Now, this watch is an automatic watch. It is water resistant down to 200 meters and features some very nice details such as the minute hand reaching exactly to the beginning of the inner rotating bezel. It costs just $250, it's limited to 1970 pieces and it features a screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance as I said a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, and an automatic movement from Seiko, the Caliber NH35, with 24 joules and a power serve of 41 hours. Next up, we have an extremely robust watch by Devosa. He says it's one of the few watches that he's not taking off the bracelet of. He thinks that they belong together. It's a blue loom and a beautiful bracelet, he says. He says it can be and is worn everywhere. He loves it. I do like that you have gone with the Devosa that is not an entirely, you know, copied watch from the Rolex Mariner. I do like that because uh, the Devosa, which has the Mercedes hands, they do look kind of similar to the Submariner. This one does too, but it's definitely not a blatant copy. It's a beautiful watch with some very interesting uh, details, such as these blue details on the bezel just before the hour markers, and on the seconds hand, it does look good. Davosa makes some of the most robust watches in its price range, so this one will definitely work when you're doing your fitness things. Next up, we have a Seiko Diver. I adore this watch, it's awesome. It's called the Turtle 777. He got it on a spur of the moment thing. He has been wanting one before, but when he tried it on, he just got it and he has no regrets. He says it's strap friendly and a great size on his wrist. It's his favorite diver. I definitely understand why that is. It just screams Seiko everywhere. This is an entirely in-house made watch. And I just adore that with Seiko's watches. It's extremely robust, it has, it has a super independent design, it's not copying anything at all, it's definitely its own thing. 
I am assuming that its loom is fantastic, and of course it's very durable, and that day date function is also very useful. Fantastic watch. Next up we have a watch that I've actually had in my collection before but sold it. This is the Bulova Moon Watch. In his description of this watch, he says that it's his birth year watch, and he just had to have it. He does wish that the lug width was 22 millimeters instead of 20, but he is glad to have it in his collection. I definitely do understand your wish there, because that watch is quite a large watch at, I think, 45 millimeters. The watch, however, is beautiful. I've had it before and I regret selling it. It's got that very simple toolish design, it's extremely legible, the movement is so so accurate within 10 seconds a year I believe, and the smooth sweep of the seconds hand is pretty cool too. A great watch, the only issue I have with this watch and probably why I sold it is because it's only got 50 meters of water resistance so I would not bathe or take a shower with it and so that was kind of a deal breaker for me personally because this was the only watch in my collection at the time. I would not hesitate buying one again though and I might do that in the future, it's an awesome watch. Next up we have a very very feature packed watch here. This is called the Aromatic 1912 day slash night calendar and it's his most complication complicated watch. LOL. It took a while for him to learn everything offered, but it's such a useful watch, he says. It's comfortable on the wrist and it's German powered. So this is an entirely automatic movement with all of these functions. It's super interesting. It's got a moon face, the day, the month, and the date. And of course, also the time. The bezel and the crown are very appealing to me, However, I would not personally own this watch just because of the Roman numerals. I'm not a big fan of those, but it doesn't matter because you like it and I definitely do understand why. Next up, we do have a more Submariner look-alike watch. He says it's a strap beast because of its simplicity. It's comfortable on both a bracelet and a strap and keeps very accurate time because it is a quartz. It's called the Foibos. PX002C, and I believe this would make a great beater watch. Next up, we have an aviation timepiece. This is called the RSC Mustang, named after the famed World War II plane. He does think that the onion crown is a pleasure to look at, and I do have to agree with that there. It is looking quite nice. Next up, we have this Spinnaker Floys. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I am quite familiar with the watch because I do have a friend that owns one. It is an homage to another grail of his, of course the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms. He loves that the hands and the markers and the bezel all have loom. It's worn at least once a week, it's great on a leather or a strap or a NATO and it uses a Seiko movement. And having that loom on the bezel is super awesome. I wish that more and more watch brands do this because it is extremely cool to look at at night. Finally, we have the Casio G-Shock DW5600HR. In his description, he says it's got a negative screen, which is when the numbers on the screen is white and the background is black instead of the background being white and the numbers being black. I do like that, makes it look a whole lot more stealthier. He says it gives him the basics, like the time and the day and date and year, etc. It reminds him of the days when he only had a couple of watches and both were Casio. So what can I say about this watch? Well, well, it's a G-Shock, it's got a bunch of features, it's extremely durable, it's 200 meters water resistant, it's lightweight, it's accurate, it's a Casio G-Shock. Everyone has to have one at least once in their watch collecting career, I think. He said that he has more watches, but those that we have taken a look at today is his core collection. He is not getting any more watches until Christmas. I personally am not very good at restricting my watch purchases, but if you can keep yourself from buying more watches until Christmas, good on you. And his plan there is to purchase the Longines 
Hydro Conquest. That's a fantastic watch, by the way. I have reviewed it. Love that watch. He says, thanks for doing this and have a great week. You're welcome and have a great week to you too, my friend. Thank you so much for being the first submission here. I do appreciate it. And if you guys would like to submit your own watch collections, as I said before, follow the first link in the video description. And I would love to take a look at and feature your collections right here on the channel. And so I thank you for watching this video. Please do click that like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you would like to see more of these videos and I'll see you in the next one.